Hey, it's Steve. In this video, I'm going to show you how I built this concrete retaining wall. Let's take a look. Okay, so if you saw my video a few weeks ago on my new laser cutter, you saw how I cut out panels and tunnel portals from birch plywood with that laser cutter. I'll have a link down in the description to that video as well as to the laser cutter itself. Anyway, I cut out panels from plywood to serve as retaining walls and also to serve to hide the front edge of the middle level. Now to finish off the retaining walls, I played around with some different ideas and what I ended up doing was to add a strip of styrene to the plywood panels along the top and then vertically to add some detail and make it look more like a solid concrete retaining wall. The technique I used was to scrape on some drywall spackle to hide any of the stronger wood grain and then paint everything with a mixture of paint and white PVA glue. So here you can see the plaster material I used. This ended up really not working out that great and wasn't really needed in the end because the glue and paint mixture was so thick. But for the initial pieces, I scraped on the patching plaster and then mixed up the glue and paint mix. I just picked a gray color paint that I already had on hand, and that was probably a little too dark overall uh, and not really quite beige enough, but I'll try to get that color a little bit better later on with weathering powders. After painting on the first coat, I grabbed some packages of strip styrene and used a thicker one for the top of the wall and then the thinner ones for the vertical pieces. I just cut these to size and pushed them into the paint and glue mix. Now you might be saying, Steve, PVA glue isn't going to bond styrene to wood very well. And while that is true, um, because I am adding multiple coats of the glue and paint on top of the styrene, that should actually bond everything just fine. They'll effectively be a you know, relatively thick coat of the PVA glue coating everything, and that should create a solid shell, preventing anything from peeling away. After getting all the pieces cut and pressed into place, I put a coat of that glue and paint mix on top of everything and then set that completed piece aside. I repeated the process for three more wall sections and then moved on to the tunnel portals. I wanted those sections to look thicker and so I took some scrap pieces of insulation foam board and cut those to match the tunnel portals. I would have used my hot wire cutter to do that, but my hands were pretty much a mess. I didn't want to go and wash them first or get any of the paint or plaster and, and glue mix on anything else. I cut out the foam for the first tunnel portal such that it was only slightly larger than the opening to the portal, so it would still actually fit inside the existing opening on the layout. Then I glued that to the back of the tunnel portal with some wood glue and then filled in the joint with some additional patching plaster. Finally, I painted everything with the paint and glue mix. Then I added the styrene strips to the top and sides and put another coat of the glue mix on top of that. I finished the last two remaining wall segments and then worked on the second tunnel portal using the same process as the first one. And with those done, I put everything aside to dry for a few hours. Once everything was dry, I took a 400 grit sanding stick and sanded all the various pieces smooth, trying to get any little bumps or ridges that were in place pretty much uh, flattened out. The sanding took a lot of the paint off in places, but since I was planning on doing multiple coats anyway, I really wasn't worried about that. I wanted to get the wall pieces glued in place first though before adding any additional coats of paint, so I grabbed some wood glue and started attaching pieces to the layout. First though I raised up the middle level on blocks so I wouldn't accidentally glue it shut. I used plenty of glue on the back, bottom, and sides of each piece and then pushed them into place, and then I just used my handy 1-2-3 blocks to help keep everything from shifting. For the left tunnel portal, I had to add a strip of wood to one side to move the tunnel portal out just far enough to, to prevent it from hitting the middle level base when it was closing. And it was just easier to do that than it was to saw off a little bit more from that edge of the middle level. Then I glued down the left tunnel portal and sized up the wall section between the tunnel portal and the front center section. I shaved the right edge at a 45 degree angle with a knife so it would sit flush against the adjoining piece and make for a nice tight seam. Then I glued that piece in place as well. Next I got the remaining short wall section on the left hand side glued in place and then moved on to finishing up the right side. I got the tunnel portal section glued in place and then the adjoining two wall sections. I shaved one edge on both of them so they would fit snugly and also added some strip wood behind the short wall section on the right so it wouldn't interfere with the middle level base again. Once the glue was dry, I came back with a patching plaster and a putty knife and filled in all the seams the best I could so there weren't any gaps that were visible. And just like with woodworking, some filler and sandpaper goes a long way in getting everything to look a lot better. 
I mixed up another batch of the glue and gray paint and added another coat on top of all the wall panel sections. I eventually added more paint since the mix was really a little bit too transparent. And after the first additional coat dried, I came back and added a second coat to all the wall panel sections and even a third coat in some areas. Once the paint mix was sufficiently dry, I wanted to work on the weathering. So I took some German Grey Vallejo paint and added that to a mix of water and alcohol. And I used the alcohol in there as well just so everything would dry faster, but it ended up really drying too fast. I brushed the black wash over all the wall sections, trying to get even coverage, but the wash was drying too fast, and so I wasn't able to get it quite as even as I would have liked. Next I grabbed a gray and tan pan pastel and a brown AMI weathering powder and then I got a large brush and worked all of those onto the walls. I used the gray first to help blend in the black wash I had used earlier and that helped to lighten everything up a little bit and then I came back with a tan color to add some dirt color to the walls. Finally I used some of the dirt ballast I normally use as my base ground cover and brushed that onto the walls as well. Finally, I took some black powder and applied that above the tunnel portals where exhaust from the diesel engines would likely blacken things up. I covered the lower tracks with some masking tape and then I took a can of dull coat and I sprayed all the wall sections down to secure the weathering powder in place. But the dull coat always ends up making the weathering powder kind of disappear and so once that was dry, I came back and applied another round of weathering powder to all the walls. Then I sprayed on the, another layer of dull coat and then came back and did another round of weathering powder. Finally, I pulled up the tape, vacuumed off all the excess powder, and then cleaned up the rails with some alcohol wipes and the lower level retaining walls were done, at least for now. Here you can see what the walls look like from the inside. I'll probably come back and paint the inside of the walls either black or gray, but I'll worry about that later. Okay, so anyway, there's a look at how I built this concrete retaining wall. Um, I think overall it looks pretty good so far. I am going to probably touch up a few areas here before everything is all said and done, but I'll probably wait until I have a lot of the work around here done in terms of, you know, just some of the scenery work up here and down here because I may end up, you know, getting paint or glue or whatever else on here just from doing the surrounding scenery work and then I may have to touch it up anyway. But I'll probably do a little bit more weathering on this wall. Overall though, I think it looks pretty good. I wouldn't though recommend following all the steps that I did here. The doing the plaster on top of the wood was to remove the wood grain to make it look more uniform. However, I think just doing the paint and glue mix, doing it this way would have worked out fine. Now again, the only reason why I used all that glue was because I was putting styrene on top of wood and that's kind of hard to glue together. I didn't have any super glue on hand. Just I had a bottle, but it had kind of solidified on me and that would have bonded it probably better. But anytime you coat this regular white PVA glue on top of stuff, you know, kind of make like a shell on top of whatever you have, it makes a pretty solid surface. And so I don't expect any of this to come off because there's three or four layers of uh, that glue paint mix on there. And so that should have made a very solid kind of shell on top of everything and prevent anything from peeling away. So I think it's going to be very solid for me and perform really well and just, just structurally. So I think that part worked out fine. I'll do something similar on the retaining walls up here for this top level. I didn't get the wooden time to do those retaining walls and so I was going to do all of it at one time and have the video on all the retaining walls, but I just didn't get the materials in time and I'm trying to do these videos every week. And so that'll be another video uh, finishing up those walls up there. But anyway. Concrete retaining walls, making some progress here. Hope you liked the video and thanks for watching. Bye.